From the pandemic of 2020, polarized politics, geopolitical unrest, and an economic downturn which cost this country tens of thousands of jobs, stress has gripped most of our society. Most have accepted the notion that having a life of peace is nothing more than a fantasy, but I am going to give you 10, yes, 10 proven strategies to beat the beast called stress right after this message. So determining whether the stress we are feeling is healthy or unhealthy is primarily how we respond to the stress. Does it push it to do our best or does it make us physically and mentally ill? It's all in how you respond that determines whether it's good or bad. The question becomes then, how do we know when we are allowing mild stress to traverse into severe stress? Well, first, instead of just thinking about a bad situation periodically, we find that the situation consumes our thoughts. Secondly, we go from being solution-oriented to what I like to call defeat-oriented thinking. You know, the worst-case scenarios start to actually feel like reality. We start to visualize the worst-case scenarios as the only outcome. And this is the final stage of what we call worry. Finally, When worry is allowed to persist, the key word there is persist, that's when it turns into stress. Stress is like a weightlifter. Instead of putting that weight down, they're holding it 24-7. Now, you know that would literally destroy their body. But yet we think it's okay to hold on to mental weights without any thought that this just might be harmful. You have to verbally tell yourself, put it down. You're feeling stressed, pull it down. You're feeling anxious, put it down. Tell yourself, hey, put this down. Remember, weights are not meant to be held. They're meant to be lifted, moved, and then put down. Power tip number one, just say no. Are you a charity? Do you have unlimited resources? Do you have unlimited time and energy? Now, if the answer to any of those things is no, then you need to learn how to say no to those that demand your limited time and limited resources. The stress of the obligation of having to do stuff for people, that's going to wear you out. We say yes because we feel like people will like us more. And boy, what a bad way to get into If we have to say yes to things so people will like us, so that people will accept us. And if we say no, people won't like us. Let's move on to tip number two, get moving. Exercise is not only about just getting your body shaped and perfect, but it has a wide range of benefits that can improve your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. You see, exercise, it's not just good for the body, but also it's good for the mind. Regular physical exercise and regular physical activity has been shown to reduce stress and anxiety by releasing a feel-good hormone called endorphins. This can improve your mood and promote a sense of well-being. Now, exercise also helps us to improve our sleep quality and increase brain function, enhance cognitive skills such as memory, concentration. So listen, if you want to boost your mental health, exercise is a powerful tool. Power tip number three, practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is the practice of paying attention to the present moment, being here now. And you be in that moment with curiosity, but without judging it. You know, it involves fully engaging our senses and bringing our awareness to the present moment, whether it be through breathing or thinking or emotions or surroundings, but it's just about being fully present. When you're fully present, then you're out of the past and you're not in the future. You don't want to live in the past and you don't want to live in the future. Mindfulness keeps you in the present. 
And sometimes our stress comes from the fact that we're either caught up in the past situations or we're caught up worrying about future issues. Mindfulness takes all of the scattered thoughts that happen in our mind. Sometimes we have this, this scatterbrain effect where we got so much stuff, but mindfulness pulls all that stuff back into our mind so that way it is under control. Finally, uh, oh, number four in, in these power tips is get some fresh air. Spending time outdoors allows us to connect with nature. Nature can be very peaceful. I know there's been times when you've been inside and said, I just need to get some fresh air. And you go outside, you hear the birds singing. I mean, that kind of stuff can be calming. Nature has been shown to reduce stress, anxiety, depression, improve our moods. Fresh air can also help us just clear our minds. Sometimes if we're working in an office environment and it's become overwhelming and stressful, it's just good to get up from your desk, get up from your cubicle, go outside and just get some fresh air. Get better sleep. A good night's sleep is often overlooked, but it's crucial for our overall well-being. Many of us lead busy lives with hectic schedules, work deadlines, and endless distractions from screens and devices. As a result, sleep often takes a back seat, but it shouldn't. So why does sleep matter? Let's take a look at the science behind it. First, sleep is essential for our brain function. During sleep, our brain goes through various stages of sleep, including rapid eye movement and non-REM sleep, which are crucial for memory consolidation, learning, and cognitive function. Poor sleep can also affect our mood and emotional well-being. Studies have shown that sleep deprivation can lead to increased irritability, mood swings, and even depression and anxiety. Getting enough restorative sleep can help regulate our emotions, enhance our moods, and improve our overall mental health. But it's not just our brains that benefit from a good night's sleep. Our physical health is also deeply influenced by our sleep habits. So how can we ensure we get a good night's sleep? Well, here are some tips for establishing healthy sleep habits. Number one, stick to a consistent sleep schedule. Going to bed and waking up at the same time every day even on weekends. Number two, create a relaxing bedtime routine to signal to your body that it's time to wind down, such as reading a book, listening to calm music, or practicing relaxation techniques. Number three, make your sleep environment conducive to rest with a comfortable mattress and pillows, dim lighting, and a cool room temperature. Number four, limit screen time before bed and definitely avoid caffeine and heavy meals close to bedtime. Number five, incorporate regular exercise into your routine, but try to avoid regular exercise before or close to bedtime. Remember, quality sleep is an investment in your overall health and well-being, so prioritize it just like you would with healthy eating and regular exercise. Talk to someone. I know that sounds so weird in 2023, but when I say talk to someone, I mean as in another human being, on the phone, face to face, which would include FaceTime. I would even encourage video chatting. Listen, you don't have to call anybody to share your problems or that you're worried or stressing. Sometimes just hearing another friendly voice may be enough to lower your stress levels. Again, we're not talking texting. We're not talking DMs. Talking is important. Take a break, a news break, and this includes social media. You know, most news these days is bad news. Filling your head with a bunch of negative news can affect your overall mental state and well-being. You see, the thing about the news is, is it tends to give a bleak outlook on life. Y'all know that. If you miss the news for a whole week, I've done it. When you come back to it, nothing has changed. The economy is still bad. The politics are still bad. Staying away from negativity is one of the things that's going to help you to deal with this beast called stress. Get a hobby. You know, do something relaxing and fun that has nothing to do with your job, your business, 
your livelihood, make a garden, do woodworking project, learn how to dance. Maybe I should learn how to dance. But hobbies are designed to transport you somewhere else mentally than where you are. Probably most of you probably have something that you really like to do, but you allow other things to get into the way of it. Working on your hobby is just as important as anything else in your life. You are not a hero. You are not a, a, a savior. Um, sometimes we get into this habit where we feel like we always have to fix things for people. And we weren't designed to do that. And sometimes we can wear ourselves out so much by trying to be a superhero to everyone, trying to save everyone, run into everybody's defense. Have you done it? Have you been that person that felt like you need to run to somebody? Sometimes even our grown children, we want to always run to their defense, but there are times when we have to allow them to live. That means to experience life in some ways that maybe we want to protect them from. You weren't designed to save the world. You weren't designed to rescue your friends and family all the time. Now, every now and then it's fine to help. Again, we're not talking about not helping people. We're talking about getting into a mentality where all of a sudden it becomes stressful. Power tip number 10, don't carry any burdens that don't belong to you but you haven't been given the strength to carry other people's problems. You don't have to, you're not supposed to. You can help, but again, you don't wanna, like I said in number nine, start carrying stuff for people and getting into that superhero mentality. Listen, if you stay long enough for these 10 tips, I got a bonus tip for you. Learn how to laugh. We don't laugh enough. And in fact, I got a question for you. Have you laughed today? And if you haven't, why not? There's so much to laugh at. <laughs> Listen, life should never become so serious that we cannot take time out to laugh. A merry heart is like, it's as good as any medicine. And I've discovered over the years that some of the things that I was stressing over, I really should have been laughing at. Just as there's a thin line between love and hate, there's also a thin line between laughing and crying. So I make sure that I take time to laugh every day. Find something to laugh about. Instead of taking everything so serious, laugh at, laugh at yourself, especially when you make a mistake. Sometimes it just helps to laugh about certain things, all right? And not to take life so serious.